My name is Donna Warhover and I'm at Morning Glory Farm in Mount Vernon, Iowa. I am a CSA farm. Uh, started out uh, eight years ago with 10 members in my CSA while I continued to work full time off of the farm. Um, this year we are up to 108 uh, summer shareholders. Um, I also have a spring and fall CSA share as well and um, am able to grow for those two extended seasons because I have or had two high tunnels. The high tunnels um, have been an integral part of, of increasing my income on the farm. I'm able to um, grow so much earlier in the season. I, this, this past season started planting in February and I will harvest through November in these high tunnels. Um, and so being able to extend the season has um, been uh, such a uh, financial boost for the farm. Um, it also allows me to grow extremely um, good lettuce and greens that are typically dif more difficult to grow in the field. Last Monday I started to um, get weather alerts on my cell phone and started checking radar and was shocked to see the enormous storm that really was not predicted um, heading toward us. And so we immediately began closing down high tunnels and securing um, anything that was, that was outdoors. Um, and it was right around lunchtime when all these alerts were, were going off on our phones. And um, my crew uh, had actually taken an early lunch break and were just heading back to the farm. And so they helped get things secured as well. And they had opted to stay in the barn during the storm. Um, uh, Bridget Fonseca, who is my full-time uh, co-farmer here, she, uh, she's like, it's a hundred plus year old farm, or uh, it's a hundred year old barn and it hasn't gone anywhere. I'm sure we'll be safe. And so I thought, yeah, you're right. I mean, we've, we have storms and we've, it's been fine. So they decided to stay, close up the barn and stay in and stay working. I, on the other hand, went to the house for lunch um, and quickly realized that this was not an ordinary storm. So Bridget and I were able to keep in touch via text because at that point it was too dangerous for either of us to, to move locations. Um, she and Kristen, our, our uh, other employee here on the farm, were able to watch from the windows of the barn the high tunnel uh, lift up out of the ground and take flight. Um, and at that point, uh, they decided to ride out the rest of the storm in the walk-in cooler. We're doing a building project here, and the day of the storm, I had gone into the, uh, to the new building and said to the electricians that were working, um, you guys wanna just come to the house and we'll just hunker down in the, in the basement? And they're like, no, no, we're fine. Um, and I said, well, okay, we, we need to close up the building though so that the wind doesn't take it, because um, we do a lot of wind here at Morning Glory. Um, and they were able to close everything up. And after the storm, when I came out to check on them, they actually were very glad that they had stayed in the new building because they had spent the entire time holding down the, the big garage doors that weren't completely hooked up yet and, uh, and saving the building from um, being blown into the neighbor's soybean field. So, um, so I, was, I was grateful for them risking their lives to save my new building. <laughs> When I was in the house uh, during the storm, uh, a tree, probably more than 100 years old, uh, a tree fell up against the house, ripping the power from the transformer um, on the road. And um, I realized at that point, while I'm looking out the window and all I can see is, is tree, um, that this was a really serious situation. Um, I watched, you know, everything around the house just blowing uh, away from the house and into the into the different fields. Um, when I came out and saw the damage to the high tunnel um, and the other trees and things that were down and 
all of the, the crops that were just literally laying on their sides, um, all the tomatoes in cages uh, where the, the tea posts and the tomato cages had lifted up out of the ground and were laying on their sides. Um, I thought, oh my gosh, this is the hardest hit we've ever been. And, um, and didn't realize until later that evening when I decided I needed to go check on a farmer friend that um, I was unable to get a hold of and drove through Mount Vernon on the way to her farm the devastation that had taken place around me that I was unaware of. Um, I quickly realized that um, we were quite fortunate. It could have been so much worse. Mother Nature did a lot of culling for us. So when we were able to start cleaning up in the, the, the day after and the next couple of days, um, just the number of um, tomatoes, eggplant, peppers um, that were just ripped from the plants was astounding. Um, but then also the ones that were still on the plants and, and severely damaged um, that we had to actually just pick from the plants. Um, even a week and a half later, uh, still calling plants that looked to be okay, or calling vegetables that looked to be okay, um, but are obviously still damaged from the storm. Um, you know, ripping out plants that had snapped at the at the base. Um, the uh, the pepper plants had suffered a hit the beginning of July when we had a, a severe wind and hail storm. Um, and so we lost a good number of pepper plants then, um, and we lost at least that many again um, for this storm. So, um, and in addition to, to the actual loss of plants and crops, the plants are just, um, I don't know if they're strong enough at this point in the season to fully recover. So um, our harvests are, are um, less and less every day when we go out. So in addition to just the typical exhaustion that we um, face this time of year, we just have the added stress of once again um, having to react to another crisis situation. Um, you know, at the, at the same time my uh, high tunnel was being blown away, people were signing up for my fall share. And so um, you know, I, I was banking on the vegetables in that high tunnel for the fall share. Um, and so now do I need to cut my fall share numbers down early um, and again lose that revenue? Um, or do I come up with more creative ways to fill those fall shares and allow them to, to keep those orders to keep coming in? So just trying to balance all of those things.